Almost every week, I have a new gun in my hands. The game is to work around the fit, learn how it shoots, and give it a good test. Don't get me wrong, it's a lot of fun doing this. I tell you what, there ain't nothing so satisfactory as shooting easy targets with a four ten. But it's pretty terrible for my consistency and shooting style. Oh, no, I can't do that. This produces some highs and lows in my shooting and leaves me wondering, am I a good shot? Oh, you missed. Yeah. You yeah. missed. <laughs> Regardless of the answer, I wanted to figure out exactly where I'm at. So I headed to Barbary for a training session to give myself a benchmark. I'm excited to see how today goes. I've used the shotgun for training before and I've been out and shot like one practice round this year maybe where I actually kept score and paid some attention. And you think back in Dominican, I shot a 97 out of 100. That is the best score of my life. So it's clearly some talent there, but it's just gonna be an interesting benchmark. I'm actually excited to see how today goes. It's been a long time since I shot a scored round where it wasn't a film. You know, most of the time we're out here having fun and, and making films on shoot. So it's, it's a very different thing. Today, the sole purpose is to go into a stand, make a plan, enact the plan, and review the plan afterwards. Mostly so I know if I shoot how I think I'm shooting, but also to set a benchmark. I'm moving into a new gun next year, and I have a few sort of personal targets of what I'd like to shoot at some of these competitions. To do that, you can't just turn up, right? I was never good at revising as a kid, so this is like my shooting revision. Coincidentally, today's video is brought to you by Shotcam, who have a sale on from the 24th to the 27th of November 2023. They got 150 pound off Gen 4s and Gen 3s. The plan is to shoot 100 targets over 15 stations and analyze the whole process, making notes on what did and didn't work for future use. Awkwardly, that is not how a shot cam is supposed to look. It's supposed to look like this. Clear, sharp, and fresh. I use a Gen 4 shot cam week in, week out, both for personal shooting and for work, and I can honestly say they are brilliant. However, I was on a personal mission duck shooting the night before and got it covered in seafoam and muck. They're really good if you look after them. That's awkward, but you can still see through it, so that's good. Let's carry on. Starting on stand four, right to left quartering looper and on report left right low crosser, three pairs. All right, let's see them. All right, that's uh, some close quarters targets. At first, I'm gonna hold out, watch it into the gun. I think trying to sort of see it early with the light bouncing off the front edge is gonna be hard. That should set us up for the other one. I'm gonna just let it come for our gun, come for it and kill it. That's the plan anyway. What's the worst that could happen? We missed some more targets. Done that before. I clearly did nothing like what I said for that first target. Instead, starting further back and pulling the trigger as I passed its front edge. You've already seen how I missed that. I did a completely different move. I thought that I could cut it off a little earlier and actually all that did was make me miss. Why did I change something that was working? Play the HD, that's why. Stand three or stand two as it is for us. Nice close rabbit, not too concerned with that. Start, watch it into the gun, connect and just pull straight off the front edge. It's 10 yards away. The bee bird's a little edge on pink thing that lands 25 yards away but actually seeing it with that light behind the trees there's gonna be a test i should go and change my glasses but i'm not gonna my plan with that is to hopefully see it and probably maintain lead it because i think by the time i see it, it's going to be landing and so the only hope is to hopefully fly into a space in front of it or well, find myself into a space in front of it at least that's the thought process anyway all of this kind of actual planning has been fairly new to me in the grand scheme of things So that rabbit, no drama at all. What I've learned from watching this footage just now, I should have started the gun a little later. Real bad gun handling on that miss. I stuck with it and then I gave it a bit. It just looks awful. But the second shot surprisingly worked really well. Usually I wouldn't have made much of a plan going in there, but going in there, I actually executed that really well. Quite proud of myself. And those Sovereign six and a half absolutely pounded it. They are my favorite fiberboard gel. I shot pro fibers for years. The fact they've re-released these, I know they're overkill and I don't care. Miss, hit, 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 out with a seven. The miss on the rabbit was stupid. And then you actually look at the pattern. It's pretty unforgiving pattern wise, unfortunately. Really surprised I hit those second birds. I'm not surprised. I went in with a solid plan, but it required an unbelievable amount of focus. Happy with that. Not happy to be two away after two stands. That's pretty dumb. You can see I've fresh back from America. I've still got Texas mud all over my bag. Still got American targets on the brain. But that was a real interesting environment and that's mostly why I'm doing this today because it shooting all those guns in quick succession was a really interesting concept and a really interesting experience and it made me understand that every gun needs to be shot with a different sort of style but every clay needs to be tackled in the appropriate way and it really pushed me to the limits of my technical ability which 
made me just wonder, am I actually any good? Next, Dad. Right, we have stand two. Left to right crosser and a right to left crosser. Let's go. The first bird was a long left to right incoming crosser, followed by a quartering away from the right. The plan on the first was a pull away shot, but reviewing these shots now, my hold point and subsequent timing were horribly inconsistent. The second shot was meant to be swing through, but clearly the inconsistency in the first bird led me to similar sins on the second. This needs work. Hey, six out of six, that is more like it. When you've got 15 sporting stands, you really can't afford to be dropping one per stand as I have been. Oh, stand three, I was talking for too long. The shot cam actually went back to sleep. So I've missed that first shot, but I did miss the first shot. So it's nice not to be reminded of it. I just held the gun too high and that jump was nowhere near as big as the first one I saw, or perhaps it wasn't as big as I'd reimagined. Rest of it, really nice. Whole point just after the A, good solid shots. And the second bird died, wow. Uh, again, very big variations on how I killed that second target. I shoot one with swing through, another with swing through, but with a lot later, and the other one complete maintain lead. I appreciate it's not a hard target, but again, what this has shown me is I do need to really refine my choices in the moment and stick to them. As I said earlier, Shotcam have a sale on from the 24th to the 27th of November. There's 150 pounds off Gen 4s and Gen 3s, making them 499 for a Gen 4 and 329 for a Gen 3. What is the difference between a Gen 4 and a Gen 3? Well, the similarities are that they come with a carry case, a charger, and they both clip to your gun with a 12 gauge adapter. Other adapters are available in sub gauges and for side by sides. The differences are that a Gen 3 has a five hour battery life, a Gen 4 has a 15 hour battery life. The Gen 3 is fixed at four times zoom in 1080p. The Gen 4 goes from two times to eight times zoom in full 4K at that two times zoom. And the Gen 3 has 64 gigabytes of memory and the Gen 4 has 128 gigabytes of memory. The Gen 4 is clearly the better tool but for the saving that gen 3 still does a lot they have proved invaluable for my shooting because they don't lie and that is the best bit about a shotgun when your friend says you're behind it in front of it they don't really know a lot of the time unless they're a professional shooting instructor you can see with this pretty much exactly where you are or where you were and often in my case how inconsistent you were with hold points leads and moves Stand 5 was an incomer with an on-report floppy slow white crossing bird. I made a plan to shoot the first one pull away and the second one with a very slow swing through. I'd say everything went to plan except my timing on that last pair which was a little off. When you have a target that close with a setup like this, there is no margin for error. Six out of six ain't bad. Some more convincing breaks there. You should walk away with a stand like that. Six out of six. I'm just gonna log into the Shotcam app and change the settings into real time 4K. Because I can, we're gonna go with 120 frames, 2.7, 60 frames 4K. Let's go full 4K. Save. This is one of the more disorientated things because it's such a wide field of view all of a sudden. But it might be quite interesting just to see more general hold points. And I've used this setting for training more often than not because it does give you a full picture. You can see the clay coming earlier so you can actually see what point you're seeing it, what point you're starting your move. Certainly on this tighter stuff, it seems to make sense to change it. It's interesting shooting back with the Maruku, right? I shot this for years and I've now shot the long form for a couple of years and I shot that with quarter and quarter choke. And it's amazing just how my scores improve just by having a little less choke. And it's really when I first met Solomons that gave me the confidence to be less choky. Seeing what a three eighth or quarter choke will do to targets with a decent shell, it, it removes that kind of necessity. And I do love watching targets turn to smoke, but it's really annoying when you miss them and the pattern is the same size as the clay and you're missing it by an inch. I'm an all right shot. I'm not a great shot. I need a little bit of leeway. But this is a fixed choke, so uh, that's what we've got. All right, calibrated, done. 
Stand six going away and close looper. Shouldn't struggle with this. I said I was gonna shoot that second one with swing through. Let's see how it actually worked. The first one, should have just let it pass the gun. Bosh, very small move, nice. How was the hole point for that? It's a little blade of grass. So evidently my first hole point changes between all four shots, as you can see, that's not great, but I've got the gun ever so slightly at my shoulder, so I'm not paying too much attention, but my visual hole point, I remember being very firm about a foot over this tree on that blade of grass. The gun is kind of waiting for, for me to start the move. Probably should sort that out. I'll have to phone Ed to see whether that's an acceptable thing, whether when you're working with your eyes, your gun should stay in a very static position. Every single one of the first shots seems to be swing through in the second shot, Maintained lead on the second. Pull away on the third. Pull away on the fourth. I wonder why I shall that second one maintain lead. I can tell you for why is my hold point is completely different to the rest of them. The rest of them I hold it much higher on the bank. I think that one where I'm starting so low I have to insert in front of the target because I'm panicking. Hold points for second shots, clearly an important factor. Fascinating to see because I always thought I was a little better than that. But I'm clearly like 60% good at that and the other 40% I do whatever I feel like doing in the moment. That's less good. Attention to detail. They broke, but that one maintained lead shot is sloppy. Again, the targets this stand are easy, so it's not the end of the world, but good practice in easy stations leads to good practice in good stations, right? In America, it was interesting. Hey, listen to myself spouting my own knowledge. <laughs> This stand always intimidates me. Coming down into the bunker, it just allows for some sort of odd angles. Lose the intimidation. Again, things learned in America. These top boys are just confident. They know they're gonna hit it. And one of the phrases that I heard on our podcast is, it's not about if I was gonna hit it, it's how hard I was gonna hit it. These are all attitudes you can try and uh, foster. Whether it happens or not, it's another question. Two right to left crosses on report. Bang, bang. Oh, that's floppy nasty. Nice tight one. Swing through it, wind back for the second shot, swing through. Two swing through shots in my head. Why not? Oh, he winds back as he calls pull. What a really clever dude that is. Let it pass his gun, bang, very nice. Wind back to the edge of the tree, bang, good. Pair broke, next. Do the same thing again, wind back, ready for the shot. I should probably complete the wind before I call pull. Same, edge of the tree. Yeah, great. Six out of six, no complaints. I'm happy with that. That wind back before the shot, I probably need to watch that. Calling pull when you're ready to call pull is probably wise, but calling pull when you know you're gonna break it is probably equally as good, maybe. Stand eight, six out of six. I'm really intrigued to see how I shot that. I think I know, but uh, the reality could be quite different. The next stand was a close-in looper and rabu report pair. The plan was to maintain lead the first and swing through the second. That first target, really happy with that. Just stick with it for half a second. And just stick it out in front. It's amazing the reality of, of how it actually works when you're behind a gun. Because I swear I connect it to that, but clearly I'm just staring at the target and the gun staying in front of it. Hey, self-awareness is king. Those brakes are good. I gotta say it, those brakes are sick. Full choke and little black clouds of dust. It was my motto for years. Stand 10 was two simple going away birds. Not much to go wrong here, providing I remembered not to throw the gun at them. A lot of the reason that Owen asked me to shoot this is because after our fit session with Matt from the Gunfit Company, this one actually has my face in the position that it's most comfortable. And I, I've always felt comfortable. I mean, I built the thing for myself. It's the only gun I've stock I've actually built for myself. And so it feels great. No complaints, just, uh, and I'm happy with how I'm shooting. We dropped three. I am getting tired. Like shooting this amount of clothes back to back, different presentations, a 15 stand course is no joke. We have a A going away. Cover it up and pull the trigger. B. Ooh, little right to left rolling target. A, hold out, watch it into the gun, stick with it, bang. B, wind back, come off the back edge, through the front and kill it. 
it's interesting all these time we spent with Ed and learning about good and bad moves and actually making these plans before you go in is important. I spent a lot of my life just going and going, yeah, I'm gonna kill it there with that much lead. And that is less important apparently than the correct move. It is, clearly, because actually going in and making, having these conversations before the stands is clearly helping. Could do with a glass of water, but I've got to go pick the kids up in a bit. So, uh, come on. Then. Really happy with my hold points on the first one. All really good, the gun comes through, it's a nice clean kill. What's interesting is to see how I then tackle that second target. And again, my hold point for the first and second is solid and a third's within a foot. So I'm really happy with that. And why did we miss that second B bird? Let's have a little look. You get overtakes and I take a real long smooth move. I just keep pulling away out of the line and into a dumb space. The other two are much nicer, a bit more instinctive for lack of a better word or a little bit faster than when I slice that one I was trying to be a smart ass and it failed Serve it up. Serve it up. The soup is on it's a kitchen sink beef and barley and pinto beans left the move from a month ago that's when my baby walked out the door you like your catfish black and you serve it on the A bird here is a midi coming across you. You're gonna to have to use full length of the stand, otherwise you're shooting at a long way, edge on going away. It's not particularly far, maybe 30, 35 yards, but where it's an edge on midi, it looks like a small target, and that's sometimes harder to draw a line on. You then have a big looper. I, my plan is to not let it touch the gun. Start with a bit of a gap and just pull that into a bigger gap. Loose it off and hope for the best. See how it goes. This is a certainly the tastiest station yet. I'd be happy. I'd be happy to hit them all. It's not about hitting them, it's about how hard you can hit them. I like that. Listening back to myself, I threw that stand away before I walked into it. I'd kinda, I think I was a little stressed, but it was a really dumb mistake to go in and throw the gun into target 11. Really happy with how I shot that first target. Let's analyze that B-bird, right? That B-bird comes up, couldn't have been a million miles out with that first shot. I think I just shorted it, that's a long way away. And then the second, I was so frustrated that I tried something else. Nowhere near, bad shot, pull out, stop, gun. And the third, I don't know what I was hoping for. That was dumb. That wasn't pretty, dropped all the loopers and then shot them after the pair and broke them all. There is no justice, but I just walked in there with a bad shot. I kind of wanged the gun a bit as opposed to placing it. I think I talked myself into just punching into a space as opposed to more of a controlled placement. Because guess what? You still need to put the gun in the right place, even on big targets. Uh, you can't just luck into stuff like that. That was silly. That was a waste. I'm getting a bit tired though. At this point, usually we'd stop and have an ice cream. There, I need to control my gun speed so I don't end up too far in front. Stand 12 was another soft station with a simple going away bird and a crosser. All good here, no dramas, let's move on. Oh, bang. Oh, finally, something for the full choke. Plot up the first, slight move to the bottom left hand edge, come down, see the rabbit, watch into the gun pull off the front edge by some distance. How you do it? I mean, what's the worst that could happen, mate, really? Stand 11 I threw away, but stand 13 I really struggled with as well, and I'm actually really excited to see how this went. Bang. Oh, wow, all right. Overcook. I note that didn't need a meter of lead. Bad target read, I kind of should have paid more attention, right? I walked in there, looked at the going away target and thought, man, that's easy. I thought it was rolling more than it was, but you have like this tight corridor that clearly adds a bit of deception. And that rabbit at the back, 35 meters maybe, but it's not going fast, it's going over rough ground. All of these factors should have been in my brain going, doesn't need that much. <laughs> Look at me, I want to just shoot it straight off the trap on that, probably would have worked. And then I hold myself back, connect. And again, give it way too much. What a donut. Third pair is where we come into our own. That's actually worth watching. I genuinely walked in there too confident. 
That was a wasted opportunity to put, fill the bag up on those first targets. Shouldn't have missed one of them and should have hit at least two of the back ones. That was a stupid misread, but I haven't seen a rabbit like that ever. Be interested to see what the short count shows. <laughs> Misses. <laughs> that was a, a wasted stand. I've held it together. The Clady <laughs> HD was turned off for the first 13 stations and stand 13. Stand 14 was an incomer from the right that came straight out of the sun, followed by a lazy looper from the left. I was a little inconsistent on that first shot, but given the sun, I'll give myself a pass. The target from the left I once again shot with two different styles. I guess I never paid that much attention as long as the targets were breaking. Seven twenty p, big zoom for the last station. The last few stands have been a bit of a rush, shown on the scorecard. But interestingly, got back into that last one, made the plan, stuck to the plan. It was a good plan, not just a yeah, I get out of them kind of plan. This last station, looper. Little short looper, that's a lie, hey bird. Big looper going away through the sun, so we're gonna to have to kill that early, given the sun. And B, little floppy looper. First target, come back, kill it with gun speed, proper swing through up through it. B, wind back, probably a nice slow, again, probably swing through. I have great intentions of shooting that maintained, but I think the answer is gonna be uh, no. stand I changed the shot cam settings this is about the worst training setting you can use for general stuff but what you can do is get very very accurate lead pictures so that's kind of handy textbook shots as far as I am concerned I'm more than happy with how I broke them I'm really happy with the whole points I'm happy with everything about that station I really pulled it back in after the station before which is sloppy this was good shooting plus it's on that massive zoom and so what's that four times six times zoom you can't see the whole point too like clearly in a wide so that makes me feel slightly better but the targets broke they broke real well as well oh, that sun is no fun you just have to sort of trust your trust your line and your speed hey i'm walking away with a 90. I'm proud of that. Some of the targets perhaps were, were left out there, but I'm happy, generally speaking. It would be interesting to go around and shoot that with a quarter choke and I'd probably shoot worse. I am a little tired. I think shooting a hundred clays back to back that fast and trying to pay attention to all of them was always ambitious. But if you can't perform when you're tired and under pressure and a bit stressed, then when can you perform, right? It's not gonna be any different when it actually comes to competition season next year. I love that gun. I, every time I pick it up, it brings back fond memories. We've had a lot of fun together. And this was uh, another notch on the list. Guys, I hope this has been somewhat interesting to you. Honestly, this film was mostly just for me. It's been a fascinating thing, and I'm sure it's been fascinating to look through it. I'll do this in the studio. I walked off that course with a 90 out of 100. It was a softish course. If I had a different choke in the gun, maybe a selection of ammunition for those closer targets, probably I reckon I would have found a few more. But then again, maybe not. What it is nice is it really put me under pressure to be exactly on them. And after reviewing all this footage and actually spending a bit of time thinking and really analyzing, I've written five things down on my piece of paper that I think are vaguely important, that I clearly have as slight holes in my armor. Consistency of hole points A and B bird. For the most part, I was very good, but it's just those little slip ups and that clearly affected me occasionally. And even when it didn't, it had the potential to completely ruin the good move that I was then trying to enact. The B bird, similar thing, transition to an area, and I'm very good at transitioning on B birds or better than I've ever been. It's important, I think, to then pick that and really radiate that into, as they said, as Wilfred said, a blade of grass, a particular flower, that's your whole point. Real dedicated attention to detail. These things are important. Consistent timing, I think that's the other thing. No last pair heroic shots, that can go. It's a shame because it's one of my favorite things to do. I love that boom, like blowing stuff up a little early on the last pair because you feel like you've got it. Cool pull when ready. I only did that on two stands. 
this, actually calling pull before is actually on my hold point, and maybe that's just what I do. But I also would have thought that that's not the wisest thing to do. Probably worth waiting that a split second extra when you're actually ready. Number four, stick to the plan. If you're doing something, do it again and again and again. There's odd mid pairs, there's all sorts of things I just did for no apparent reason. After the first player broke well with a good move, I changed it. Sometimes that was a good, a good option, sometimes it really wasn't. I don't have a lot to say about that other than stick to the plan. And number five is I've learned a bit about how I shoot. Sometimes I go in there with a plan and I do something completely different. And self-awareness is the whole point in why I've been doing this today. And I'll probably do a few of these without the camera because it's good to build a database. And I've got a database up here, but this is getting increasingly full with age and uh, demanded by other things. And so actually building a bit of a playbook, which I've also been writing in my other notepad, may come in handy for actual shooting revision. Thank you very much for watching guys, I appreciate your support. Go and check Shotcam out, they've supported us for a few years now and they are a fantastic product and we couldn't be without them. Certainly from a training perspective, they are invaluable. And also, just looking back on your heroic shots, both on game and clays, I mean, who doesn't wanna see that and relive that moment in something that's not their memory? Take care guys. Check the link out in the description of the Shotcam sale and we'll see you soon. Thank you for watching guys. This channel is made possible by our amazing sponsors. You can find out more about them in the description down below. And if you wanna support the channel, you can join as a member. You get loads of extra content, well, some extra content, and occasionally we hook up and go clay shooting together as a membership group. If you don't feel like joining today, we really appreciate you watching and subscribing. Have a wonderful day.